Hello, so the other day was Back to the Future Day and so I watched uh, Back to the Future 2 which is where Marty McFly travels 30 years into the future, i.e. 21st of October 2015 which was the other day and I noticed whilst watching it that they had a Jaws 19. One, I'm freaking disappointed that we don't actually have a Jaws 19 and two, it inspired this list. So here it is, the top seven worst shark attacks in history. Now I have included fatal attacks, um, so please bear in mind that people have died because of a lot of these uh, mentioned in the list, so I'm not going to make many jokes, or any jokes at all, because uh, it's not exactly going to be a ha-ha list, it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty real when you think people have died. I also haven't included any lone sharks, which usually target the knees. <laughs> anyway, starting off this, number seven is, is Brooke Watson, who I've only really included on this list, because he was the first recorded shark attack victim ever. Uh, there, were, there were lots before him, but he was the first one to be recorded. He was a 14-year-old merchant sailor swimming in the harbour of Havana in 1749, when an unidentified shark attacked him twice, stripping the flesh from his right leg and then biting off his right ankle on the second occurrence before he was rescued. And he survived, which is awesome. Watson went on to have a successful career in politics, eventually becoming the Lord Mayor of London. Uh, you know, I guess it's fair to say he had an uneven career, because his right leg was amputated, uneven, and he couldn't walk evenly. Coming in at number six is Randall Fry, who was killed by a great white shark who was only three feet from his diving partner. His partner felt a whoosh beside him, like a jet boat going by, and turned to see his partner zooming away in a pool of blood. Uh, they were diving for Abalone, and they were all alone, and there had been no previous sightings of sharks in the area until Fry was killed. Um, according to his diving partner, it's almost certain he was killed instantly. Such was the force of the shark's attack. Sliding his way into number five is Terry Manuel. He was diving for Abalone off the coast of South Australia in 1974 when, just as he reached the surface with a bag full of Abalone, a great white shark charged towards him, which was the word used in the official report, and lifted him several feet out of the water before dragging him down towards the depths. His friend, who witnessed the attack from their 14-foot rubber dinghy, hauled him up by his arms into the boat before Terry died moments later. His legs had been severed by the shark when his friend pulled him up. After Manuel's attack, the abalone industry in the area plummeted, with many commercial abalone divers not returning to the water for at least six months. Number four is Robert Pamperin, who was attacked and killed by a 22-foot great white shark in June 1959. Pamperin was aged 33 and diving for abalone off the coast of California at the time with his friend. During the dive, they drifted about 50 feet apart and Pamperin's friend went up for air, only to see his companion flying into the air, screaming before being dragged down to the ocean floor and thrashed about in the mouth of a great white shark. He dove down to try and scare the shark, but Pamperin was already in his jaws up to his waist and the shark was too fast. Uh, the only thing they ever recovered of Robert Pamperin was his swimming fin, which has led to speculations that he was completely devoured, completely eaten, uh, by the shark. The Jersey Shore attacks of 1916 are number three. There were five attacks over 11 days and despite overwhelming evidence of swarms of sharks off the coast, no beaches were closed during the four deaths and one severe casualty. I'm not going to go into the specifics of each attack which happened on July 1st, July 6th and 3 on July 12th. Those three happening in fresh water throwing up the major possibility of a bull shark which can live in both salt and fresh water. Officials were notified of the second attack when a lady made lifeguards aware of an upside down red canoe that was drifting in the water slightly offshore. Um, that red canoe was the second victim, Charles Bruder. There is no consensus on what shark committed these attacks, although scientists are often putting forward suggestions. Swimming its way into number two is the Lassane attacks of 1909, and I said swimming because sharks swim. Mm -hmm. You can use that, yeah. It will do, it will do well at dinner parties, you're right, yeah. It happened in the Rio Strait, about 30 miles out from Singapore, when a British steam navigation company vessel collided with the Lassane's hull in the darkness. The ship sank in two minutes, which is fucking fast, and so many passengers didn't have time to depart, and they ended up drowning. The people who did make it off by flinging themselves into the ocean in the hopes that the Onda's lifeboats would pick them up were immediately swarmed upon by a shoal of sharks. It's not certain which species of shark were involved, many of the 61 survivors were badly mauled, with the 101 dead being drowned or eaten. And finally, at number one, we have the USS Indianapolis. The Indianapolis was a US Navy cruiser torpedoed by a Japanese submarine in July 1945 at the end of World War II. It sank in 12 minutes, with about 900 men surviving the sinking. However, the United States Navy command was not aware of the sinking until four days later, when survivors were spotted adrift in the ocean. Because of this, nearly 600 men died from dehydration, saltwater poisoning, cold play music, and obviously because of this list, uh, shark attacks. 
According to eyewitness accounts, or the eyewitness, I guess, the ocean would be silent and then everyone would hear a scream and they would know that another shark had attacked. There is a popular theory that the white tip shark was responsible, all of this has not been proven and only 317 men survived the ordeal. So that was the list, um, I hope you enjoyed it, if you did, uh, it would be awesome for you to let me know by leaving a like or a comment. Um, this is my Snapchat, uh, I will see you guys very soon, goodbye. If you want to go as Kanye West, um, just tell everyone, I'm a late finish but Christmas is the best holiday of all time. It's an old joke but it fits, it 